just deep to the epidermis, earthworms possess two layers of muscle, a circular layer and a longitudinal layer. In these first images of longitudinal sections, that would be one which would run the length of the earthworm's body creating left and right halves, one can see the circular muscles in cross-section as they go around uh, the, uh, each segment, while the longitudinal muscles underneath, you can see that they can go along the length of a segment. In transverse sections across the earthworm's body, creating a front and a back, one can see the circular muscles running around a segment while uh, a section through the longitudinal layer. So note uh, these two layers look different in the longitudinal and transverse sections. When the circular muscles contract, this makes segments longer and thinner. They stretch while the longitudinal muscles, when they contract, this will make a segment shorter and fatter. The longitudinal muscles also form a soft barrier between segments, allowing independent action of segments and limiting the flow of salomic fluid. When an earthworm moves, the front portion stretches to advance further, and then the rear is brought towards it and waves of muscle contractions pass over the segments known as peristalsis. The possession of two layers of muscles, circular and longitudinal, makes earthworms a little more complex than other worms. So for example, nematode worms only possess longitudinal muscles and are more limited in the movements that they allow. Earthworms possess bristles known as setae, which allow certain segments to anchor to uh, the substrate at a given point so that the muscles can pull on this point. Most segments have two pairs of lateral setae and two pairs of ventral setae. And earthworms are annelid worms, uh, that is a phylum of worms, and earthworms belong to a subclass uh, known as the oligochaetes. Oligochaetes literally mean few bristles.